Hello. I've just recently been asked a very interesting question regarding the colours used in my online course Summer Storm. So to address the question, I have made a small video showing you how the colours are used. Now, this isn't the first time that this question has come up. It comes up frequently in my workshops that I run. And often it's because people look at their photographs and they think they see the colours that they need. It's not until you actually put the wools onto the photographs that they're working from do you actually see the colours and how true they are to what you need to use. Often colours will need to be mixed to get the right hue or even to get the lower tones and shades and grades that you want but if you put the wools onto the photographs you will get a much better idea of the colours that you need to use. Anyway here is a little video as promised. Before you start making your picture. Look at the photograph that you're working from and check out all the colours. And often when you're looking at a picture, a photograph, you'll see things like the light coming through the rain as it comes down through the clouds. And you'll see greys and whites. However, when you actually come to making your picture, it's really important that you check out the colours by placing the walls onto your picture. Because this is actually pink, candy floss pink, that comes through the grey in the clouds coming down. So, test with small bits of wool your colour and just mix a little bit of it and place it onto your picture and you'll see that the pink with the grey is actually the colour that you're looking at. And again, the pink comes up in the foreground, in the wood of the fence. The pink is apparent in the highlighted areas here. In areas on the wood, there's highlighted areas that are brighter and they're a mixture of the oyster and the pink. It's only small amounts that's required to give that lift. Mix your walls. And place them on your picture to see that they're right. Now in this instance, on the wood, there's a lot of green and there's also quite a lot of like a dark chalk granite grey that comes down. The pink and the green and those low light dark greys are what make up the majority of the fence. But it's small amounts that are actually make the grain effect. Looking here at burgundy and pumpkin. These two colours are very strong and if I actually place them onto the picture it's very hard to see those colours actually present in the picture. However, if you look at the sorrel here, and there's a bit over here too in the picture, it's a combination of pumpkin and burgundy. And it's this that gives the picture its lift. There's a lot of green and a lot of blues and elements of purple in this picture. And the complementary of blues is orange and greens is reds. So the combination of both these to make the sorrel 
it's a kind of orangey red colour that's here and over here actually helps the rest of the blues and greens in the pictures to really sing. It brings them out. You can see that once you start mixing the orange and the red together, that lovely kind of almost autumnal colour that's there is the same colour that you've got for the sorrel in both areas. I hope this has been helpful and please ask more questions if you need, but it's just really a guide to mixing your colours. When you um, have your picture in front of you, whether it be this picture or another picture that you've taken yourself to make from, always take your wools and place them onto your photograph that you're working from and mix in the colours. You'll often find there's a colour that's either side of the colour that you want. Mix them together to get the colour you require. And sometimes you may, may need to mix two or three colours together, maybe four, to get exactly what you want. But feel free to play around with mixing colours just like you would with paint to get that exact colour that you want.